Hey, we made it to Friday. We're back at Central High School. We're looking at the installation of the equipment that's going in at their auditorium because we're gonna have a production in there next week. So it's a little earlier than we expected. So we're, we're checking to see that we have enough stuff installed that we can kind of do the production with the stuff that's getting installed and, and how much gear we actually need to bring for the production. All right, looks like we will be able to use a majority of the equipment that's been installed. Thank you to Magnetar for running all, hundreds and hundreds of feet of ethernet cable and SDI cable for us so that all that equipment can just be in the theater and, and we don't have to like keep bringing a ton of equipment every, every time we come out to do a production. Um, now I'm gonna go do a COVID test uh, cause next week I'm gonna be around a ton of people. I just wanna get a test done and uh, yeah, just make sure I'm good to go before I'm around people for all the productions next week. So I'm a little early to, to my, for my appointment and I just drove past this, this kind of abandoned corner at Shaw or Ashland and the 99. But this used to be a bar called the Lucky 13. It was a horror themed bar and they used to have local bands about 10, 11 years ago. My old band, we used to play here. It was a really cool spot. They had horror movie posters and props on the wall. But this whole spot is abandoned. It looks like it's for sale. The Foster Freeze is still here. That's good. They're still open, but that's like the only thing open on this corner. Um, I wasn't even 21 yet. I wasn't old enough, so I had to like sit in the back. I couldn't drink. Uh, so I would, yeah, we would come to the Foster Freeze and grab a sandwich before our set. And the very first time we played there, the Foster Freeze, there was like a grease fire in the kitchen like the whole place was filled with smoke we got our food and we got out of there and went back to the bar but that was just a funny memory as i was driving by this intersection all right let's go swap my nose quality's not great today, but you can still kind of see the mountains in the distance. That's not bad. Not bad at all. I wanted to show you my favorite amp in the world and something really cool I just got for it. Now this is a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. This is this is in a tweed. Every couple of years Fender will do a, a tweed version. Um, and then regularly you can get the Fender Blues Deluxe in tweed. But um, this is a Hot Rod Deluxe. Uh, I really, really like it. Uh, I think it's got great clean tones. This one needs some work, and also I'm filming with my phone, so I'm getting some weird buzzing. Don't don't mind the buzzing. It's also got a really cool two-stage overdrive. So this is the regular overdrive. And 
then if you want to kick it up for some solos, you hit the more drive button and wail away. I love this amp so much. At one point, I owned three of them. Uh, one for my office, one for my kind of in town playing and one for touring. It's been almost 10 years since I've really done touring with any bands, but uh, yeah, that's how much I loved these amps. And you can find them all over the place. Like don't buy one new, you can find them used all the time, everywhere. And if you find yourself someplace that you're unfamiliar, you can pretty much find one for rent to backline anywhere. They're built like a tank. They're very solid, even for being a tube amp and it's only 40 watts. Now, because it's a tube amp, you don't need a lot of wattage for it to be really loud. And that's kind of the one problem with the Fender Hot Rod and Blues line of amps. They're very, very loud. This is just a one 12 inch speaker inside this cab. Uh, the older versions have a eminence speaker in them, but I, I think the newer models have something different. This one is at least 15 years old and I got it about 13 years ago. It needs a little work. It's the it buzzes here and there. You don't really need to do anything with the amp if you want to play it quietly. You just you just keep the you keep the volume knob turned down. And the volume knob goes from 1 to 12, which is one more than 11. But if I'm just playing in my office at home, I really keep it really low in between number one and number two. That's all I need, just a tiny, tiny amount of, of volume. But if I really want the warmth out of the amps, I really wanna push those preamp tubes, I gotta turn it up louder. But I can't really turn it up louder or it'll be even too loud for my own ears. I feel like I'm gonna damage my ears if I turn it up much louder than this. And there's been different things I've tried over the years, especially in this amp, I've tried putting different tubes in. I swapped out the groove tubes that come standard with the Hot Rod Deluxe with Russian style tubes from a company called JJ. I've also tried attenuators. I've tried multiple of these little boxes. So these boxes, it's got a input and an output and you take the cable that's coming out of the amp head and put it in between the amp head and the speaker. And it's got a knob that you could turn down and send less signal from the amp controls down into the speaker. And this works pretty good. And this has been my favorite attenuator. It's an output tamer. And what I like about it is it's got a high boost switch. Cause when you do use an attenuator like this, you can end up changing your tone a little bit. And this one has a high boost switch to kind of put a little bit of that high end in the EQ spectrum back into the signal. And then there's, of course, there's also really expensive attenuators that don't have any coloration to the tone, but I'm not willing to spend more money on the attenuator than I am on the amp. I'm not gonna spend a thousand dollars on an attenuator for a $700 amp. Although I don't know how much these go for anymore, but it was about $700 back in the day. But the latest thing I got is this little knob. This knob, this knob plugs into the effects send and return in the amp to to dial it down. So it's just a volume knob interfacing in between some of the circuitry. I found this on eBay. It actually came from Britain and I think it was like $16 British pounds and ended up being like 27-ish dollars American. And it came with this, this little instruction, Dr. Watson Elementary Audio Solutions, the Fender and PV Live and Tamer. So this will work with Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, DeVille amps, Blues Deluxe, Blues DeVille amps, and the PV Classic 30, which is a very, very similar amp. Shh. My only concern about this is that this is very rigid. Like this, hopefully, you know, they built the tolerances for this just right. Although it does look, I don't know, I don't know if you can see it. It almost looks like they're, they're pointing outward. They're not perfectly parallel. They're kind of split apart. So I, I hope this doesn't damage the amp but th this amp, I've had this amp forever. Um, you know, if, I might as well experiment with it. Um, but I, I, I don't like the, the rigid um, connector cables that go between guitar pedals. You always wanna have a flexible cable because things are gonna flex. If, if something's hard and rigid, if something, something happens, it may break off inside of the component that is plugged into or something. So I, I, I kind of wish it had like kind of a flexible 
plug in and then this knob, you know, maybe could, could clip on to something. I, I don't know. I don't know how to make this design better, but um, yeah, that is a concern of mine that the, these two plugs are plugging in to those two plugs. And if they're not perfectly made, which, you know, the, the fact that they're not perfectly parallel concerns me. Uh, but you know, this is my amp for experimenting. I change out the tubes and I, and I goof around with it. So, you know, it's worth, it's worth a shot. Another weird thing about this amp is it looks like there's a master knob. This knob here is labeled master, but it's it's not a master volume like you would think in most amplifiers where the master knob just turns everything, all of your channels up or down. The volume knob is for the clean channel. When I, when I want a clean guitar sound, I turn up the volume. And then when I switch to my overdrive channel, the master is just for the overdrive. Gotta clean the pots. But both the master and the volume, for me to kind of play this amp at practice levels, it's between one and two, and one is basically zero. If I put it all the way at one, there's no sound. So I'm, I'm at like the bare minimum of sound. So all I gotta do is plug this in into that effects send and return, and this should essentially get me the volume change that I need. Uh, so I can turn up the volume and master knobs, and hopefully with little to no change in tone of the amp, because that's my favorite thing. I love the way this amp sounds as is. I want, I want to be able to turn down the output volume, but not change the tone much or at all. So I'm going to pop this in, and that's all the way down, not getting any sound. I can turn this up. And that should be about where I was. So if I pull it back out, that's with it, you know, all the way up, which should essentially be a pass through. Oh, there's my reverb tank. Yeah, that sounds pretty, pretty close. Yeah, so when that knob is turned all the way up, I get practically no change, just a pass through. So if I turn this down, so it's from there to there, so like here is about halfway. I should get half the volume? Not exactly, so there must be like kind of a logarithmic uh, curve on this volume knob. So with this turned down, theoretically, I should be able to turn up the knobs on the amp and turn this down and play at that's still too bad. Yeah, and you can kind of tell my tone is a little warmer, and that's more so, I think, because I'm pushing the preamp tubes in the amplifier, and, and that's the sound that I want. I want it to sound like, like I'm on the stage, big and warm, when I crank up this amp when I play live. So essentially then what I need to do is kind of get the master, which is the overdrive channel, and the volume, which is the clean channel, kind of balanced. And then this is now my new actual master volume. And I can just turn this up. That's a little, that's a bit louder. pretty good. I kind of like it right there. I think this is going to work. This is pretty cool. Now I guess I got to get a second one for my other amp that's downstairs in the garage, although I'm really, I'm not playing anywhere, but uh, I should probably turn on that amp. It's almost been a year since I've played out. Uh, and I could get another one for my dad. My dad has a Fender Blues DeVille. The, the hot rod and the uh, the hot rod and the blues versions are very very similar the blues version just doesn't have the more drive option there may be some other things going on in the circuitry but they are very very similar and then they come with the tweed casing by default and then uh, the the Deville is essentially instead of one 12 inch speaker you can either get it with two 12 inch speakers or four 10 inch speakers and it's at 60 watts that's the difference between the deluxe and the Deville. But like I said, this 40 watt deluxe 
with one speaker is plenty loud. I don't need anything more than the Deluxe. The DeVille, like theoretically, if you got the 410s, it'll sound a little brighter because there's smaller cones, but there's more of them. So technically you, you have more surface area, but over a smaller individual surfaces. So you might get a brighter sound, but I like the 112 inch. I like it uh, kind of beefier sounding with the larger cone. Um, and it's it's always served me well. But yeah, if I if I need to play a gig where I need single coils, I play this Telecaster. This is a 2007-ish uh, Fender Highway 1. I think they call these American Specials now, but it's essentially the cheapest American Telecaster you can get. It's got the nitro cellulose finish, so it's actually worn away in a couple spots here. Um, but I took I took this uh, guitar on tour early 2012 to mid 2012, playing with the band, uh, Little Owl. But like I said, I'll tell the, that story as, as the 10 year anniversary gets closer. And it's relatively stock, stock pickup, stock ele electronics. I did swap out the bridge piece to be individual six bridge pieces, so it was easier to intonate. And I swapped the white pickguard with a tortoise shell pickguard. And I think I upgraded the uh, string tree. I think it had a really cheap string tree. I like the, I like the more heavy string tree. Um, yeah, but this, this guitar is well worn, well played, uh, still plays great. Um, and yeah, basically anytime I have to play out and need a single coil guitar, this is the guitar that I take. It doesn't, it doesn't have a noiseless pickup, so you get that 60 cycle hum, but I, I like it. I don't mind, I don't mind a little, a little hum here and there. Obviously this amp is crackling and, uh, probably should get it fixed, but I think it's charming. So I'm going to leave it. Yeah, that's it for today. Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, my favorite amp. This Dr. Watson uh, Lion Tamer volume module works great. Uh, I'm very happy with it. If, you know, if I find out I don't like it after using it more, I'll let you know. But so far, so good. Really enjoying this. Uh, and I'll be able to crank up this amp without blowing out my eardrums or making the neighbors angry. That's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Sure.